hello guys i hope you guys are doing good it is time for some kerrigan reviews been a while um so this is kerrigan review episode 7 the question from our dear friend uh, his name on twitter is tukso and in game name is fanatic fanatics yeah sounds pretty good i want to know my mistake in this game on first t side i felt like i was doing nothing for the team and i want to dab much faster this kind of situation i feel there's options and better way to do it but i can't find out how what about us going in and watching that his T side and trying to help him and um, see where we end. So uh, let's jump into the demo right here. Let's see. Good run path. Yeah. Ah, just love planning on the. Ah, bomb died. Yeah. Good place to plant. How's our boy surviving here? Okay. This is a good idea. Pushing in there together. Take that area, or run them, you got the numbers, remember to read your gun. Not much to say there. Honestly, that was alright. Picking up a Molotov from his friend. Aha. Uh -huh. Flashing. I just love, can we just talk about how this gun is right in my face when I'm uh, looking at this. Is it gun? Oh. So good, yeah. Get those eco frags. One more, one more. 53, 53 health, health, he he health. So far, so good. Playing it smart, not all eager to get in the kills. I like this. Coming out second, covering up the teammates. You should have his teammate now. Strafe, strafe. Mm, small thing here is like. The favor he could like do more like old in strafe because there's a big chance they're fighting mid in that scenario. Would not worry too much about that. Good. Ah, uh, Molo failed. Unlucky, no? CS2. Oh, yo, yo. That's fine, that's fine. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Flash out, God. It's hard to go out mid like that, honestly. So far, the only thing I've seen was the window thing where you just have to commit more to the strafe. Yeah. And boom, now we go. Hmm, let's see, weapon now. What is Fnatic's cooking up here? Wants to adapt much faster. So he wants to adapt. For me right now, it's like, so far, there's one thing right now, like the way the two, three times to win out mid, there's been smoke all the time, right? So either you kind of have to kind of time a break with it, a break to kind of like catch the CTs pushing forward. Um, but you're talking about adaption, and right now it is hard to go out mid if you don't have like kind of set way to do it. So what you can do is throw the Seichi, but this one will catch people going close. So uh, what you can do is um, doing different combos. So uh, you can even do Molotov like this. Because this Molotov spreads so much that you might have enemies not pushing close, so you can go out with your smoke after. So let's say you do like um, this combo, you throw like this, so it bounces further out, and you throw like this. And then what you can do is like after you deny Molo, maybe if there's a smoke here, you can uh, do like this and go through and then aim, you know, to surprise. Um, other solution I have to use since I did a deep smoke all the time is that you tell the teammate to line up this HE. I think it's not nothing special, but this HE will blow so you can see in the open. So if you aim here. So it blows really close to the edge and you don't get damage. So let me see this like this. A pin line up in here maybe. In the in the dark spot or here. It's too high maybe. Let's see. This is alright. So you can uh, tell your teammate to nade. And then you peek and try to get a kill. Um, because if you get the HE here, you don't get any damage and you can peek in the smoke. Let me teach you something about Counter-Strike. It's all about being the best and looking the best at the same time. But guys, it's not about me and how many tournaments I won. Or how good I look while doing it. This is about you.
Join me on Skin Club. Oh yeah, first of all, the way you're doing that is very dangerous. I'll explain why while the rounders keep playing. They, you have to spray in this whole area to hit a player, but they only have to spray in this short area. So never go there and spray in a smoke. It makes zero sense uh, compared to what you want to do as a player. Uh, then rather just wait because the smoke was about to fade and then you can more like shoulder peek and, and do whatever you want here, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely something you shouldn't have done. I, I feel like you don't rather be quiet here and wait out the smokes and then take the duels like with good shoulder peaks and you have a fair duel here you just ask to be spammed and you did. It's part of the game sometimes. I understand the thing when you get re-smoked you really just wanna uh, get some action but action can also mean death. For God's sake don't spam here but the second you're spamming here let's say I see a T spam like this and I know that the T's put a smoke here and I know there's a smoke behind there is a small chance that somebody's out with the spam you know because if you have a teammate in the corner here you don't want your teammate to spam the smoke it doesn't make sense unless you want to do uh, to an IQ uh, bait um, so yeah for God's sake don't spam it's so easy to spam your back see Ooh. damn this guy got smoke lineups that's the rubs lineup when I see one, I, uh, something I swear to God, it's so hard to see the enemies in the motor sometimes. I must have said that. Okay, let's see. They have been smoking mid every round, so the adaption should be either you kind of like beat the smoke mid and you go out and fight, or you just have to wait, or like I said, you have to break it uh, and peek on timing. Now, spamming in mid is. Do we have to get lucky? And we don't want to be lucky. He's doing this again, and I think it's too dangerous. I don't think you have any advances there. Let's see now. Now, yeah? Good, good. Yeah, clear good. Your teammate was window, so... What we're gonna do now here? Do you hear... No one orbits on A, you can walk up mid. Exactly, exactly. This is what I played. Now. Ah, unlucky on the swings. So now, you have to clear the angle good. Good shot, good shot. Really aware of the next one going window. Yeah, now you know one was donut. You know two guys A, guys. You know two guys A. So, this is where we need to understand how the round plays out. So, there's two options. How to explain this best. You kill one here in window. You kill the the guy holding the gap. You know Orb was A. Orb didn't shoot at you here. You know one guy's low donut from teammate. It should be information at least. So, now these two guys want to push this because... We all scared of the people going B when you know when you when you see they know that oh they know we only one guy B, so either he's doing two options now either he cuts the rotation he asks for the guy to kind of win the one on one rain my boy rain here, um, or what he's doing now is in my opinion the best would be that he has his team to get closer, and then they take this duel together and then hope for this guy to rotate it here so they get A for free. But let's see how the round plays out. This is my mind now. They know for sure there's two A if they have catched on into the round. What do we do here? We know two A still. There might be one coming with rotation. Okay. They're doing what I expect them to do. But now... Yeah. That's the thing about Donut. Sometimes you have to believe your teammate is winning the one-on-one, -on -one, but it's so hard, I guess. Smoke comes again. Smoke missed this time. Did you see? So here, okay, here, here's the one thing you can do, right? Fnatic knows that nobody's close, right? Let's get that on the clear. He sees no one coming close, nobody even spotted. Enemies think that the smoke hit. No chance they don't know if it's hit or not. Like, uh, unless the guy knew from spawn. But we all say, like, yeah, might miss, might not. If you walk here, you're going to catch them off guard because they have no idea the smoke missed and you can abuse that to your situation. So if you just insta-walk here, you will catch a good timing on going out and just searching here. But this guy... Is aware they can be out, but not fully aware. That's one thing I think you should. When we get when we get gaps or we get a mistake handled to us, handled to us, we should try to take that mistake because you should never think that the enemy is clever, more clever than you. Like no chance they knew if it's failed or not. So there you can catch them off guard. So I think when we see a situation or a chance where we have an advantage, we should always take it, especially on the T side and especially where they they have locked you guys out of mid. Because now the smoke in uh, whatever you call it in in middle in uh, on the top of the stairs we call it red 
um, is now faded. So now it's higher risk to go out, where you could have had a chance to kind of search into donut area. Smoke's up, pressure. There's good pressure. What do we do now? We go B, right? It's pretty good. Now how do we take this area? Now that... Yeah. What do we do here now? How do we hold this angle? In my opinion, it's easy to say there's an orb, right? But if you play more on off angle here, I think that's better. No matter what circumstances you're in. Unless you are scattered there down banana. So if you play this angle, the orb is always gonna hard clear it. Um, and if you're more off angle, there's a bigger chance the orb doesn't aim there. So I actually wanna go back to see how he cleared it, because then you can see from the enemy perspective. He's gonna clear the normal angle. Then, what he's gonna do now, he's gonna move off his crosshair before he goes around the corner. Now he's already pre-aiming. And if you, in theory, had a more off angle, you had a better chance to kill. Because, like, if it was a rifle, you could have killed him, obviously. But it wasn't. And, and therefore, you can mo maybe have a more off angle. That's how you always want to surprise your enemy. You can see, actually, how he, he peaked now here. And he has to flick you. Like, has to, like, kind of flick you if you're off angle. He kind of have to... What an orbit will do is clear here, and then maybe he turns his crusher down here, but he'll never expect a guy in this situation where you're like a little more off angle. You might have a better chance to kill. Hope that explained it enough. So now this, now we're back to this thing again. I don't think you see you ha you had a you could have killed him, but it's unlikely, honestly. The smoke you're throwing, I think it's better to have it further out to deny, so you can even put it further than this. Also, the the CTs can't see much. Um, it seems like your smoke was sometimes a little bit closer. So even getting it out here is uh, not bad, honestly, if you see where it is. Um, because then you can actually go through and, and take the area. And then you can also, of course, um, go out mid like this. And then uh, go through the smoke here. Or also sometimes um, do the smoke. can also be pretty underrated, so you throw the smoke here. And then you do the flash here, and then you go in and dodge, because sometimes they will nade insta. So if they come close here, they won't see the flash, and they get full blind. Uh, you don't always have to push through it, but being in this pocket can give you a lot. Um, I very think for one sure thing now is the adaption should be that you guys just play more passive. Maybe you pressure B a little, you tell teammates just fake B a bit and leave the doors, and then you guys take B and mid on the same time. But these guys were just fighting early mid, and then they left mid. And you kind of realize that if they don't re-smoke third time mid, you just have to wait out smoke sometimes. And um, I think that's an adaption you guys could have done or you could have done. Because I feel like half the time you're behind the smoke mid. Let's see here. Planning bump. Ugh. Yeah, bomb planned on ancient. Gate times. Gate times. Let's see. Are we trying to do something else? Uh, no, now it looks like we're going out, right? Let's try to go out now. Okay, we're waiting for smokes. Execute comes in. Flashes to the left, goes out. Hard clear, good. I don't... This is when you first got on ancient, you have no chance sometimes. I mean, in my opinion, that looks good. Um, the only thing is, like, if you want to play it perfect, you wait for the Molotov to come to the boxes, but honestly, I strafe that sometimes well. Somebody has to take the space, you know the smoke is gonna come, so... Okay, let's see. Last round of the half, and then we have a Nova time as well we can look into on the T side. Okay. I think I have an idea for you. Let me see what we can cook up. But first, we will just see how you adapt in next few rounds. Let's see all time. It's the bear the same. Flash. Spam. Yeah. So I, I think what I need to help our dear friend with is like some ideas how to play different on T-side uh, Ancient and Mid, as that seems to be his favorite position. Okay, let me see if there's something else. A hey, Ancient. It's rough sometimes. Okay, auto entry, entry good. Be aware of the smoke. Ah, nice shot, nice shot. Yeah. The smoke when it's that bad, it's rough. They're winning this game. 
Right. Congratulations, first of the win. What is that mid? Yeah, I think uh, most important thing is sometimes you can uh, not use your smoke. So you can just like um, do the molo to do the pressure um, with the smoke and then do any then wait. And then when they re-smoke, just wait out the smoke and second smoke. So you solar peak these areas and then you can take mid. And then what you can do is like you can smoke here so you don't have to do a high risk. I think this is smoke. Yeah. So you go in here, for example, and then you aim on this uh, this one, uh, one walk step, and release. Um, then you can take this area yourself, um, especially to face it where people are like wants to block mid and rotate. So I think it's very important for you to have like different ways to play mid. So like uh, to recap, different hechi, um, different molo, um, deeper deny, so you can play more in it. Um, what we call break HG from your teammate with a flashbang, and also um, call uh, flash someone uh, somebody's hatching for you, and you jump through with the HG and with the flash. So if they shoot at you, they get blind. So for me, that's like different ways you can uh, play uh, mid on T side. Besides that, there was only the small things. This is the offhand I'm talking about, like here. So you can like your offhand here. You can see them push. Uh, because this angle, people are always clear. No matter how you are CT, everybody has played pre-fire or whatever they have. And there's less chance that they hold this, because I would do like this. I don't think I would pre-aim up here, because I'll start aiming down for this. Um, that's just my fault. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed some of the tips I gave you. And besides that, I think you played great. And in the end, you won. Um, but we can always play better. And please don't spam the smoke grid. I think uh, it's a big tell, a big chance you die. And you basically pray to God that you get in the kill. We don't want to do that. Hope you enjoyed this Kerrigan View um, 7. So stay tuned for next one.